Go, Sasha! Very interesting. We're living in an yeah. important moment <laughs> of the human history. Now, the initiative to change the world is once more in the hands of Americans, in the hands of Trump. Russia has made a kind of uh, introduction to the change of world order in order to create multipolarity. But now everything all depends on the United States of America, on President Trump, because now he is in a position, he is capable to save the world and people of the world from globalism. Yes, yes, you heard it right. Uh, Trump is capable of saving the world from the globalism. Well, uh, this is uh, uh, this is of course uh, somewhat uh, <laughs> dated video. It is an interview of uh, Alexander Dugin uh, by Alex Jones of Infowars. As some of you probably know, there was a brief love affair between those two. Uh, but uh, this video will not be simply uh, Dugin bashing. I want to make some points about this uh, Trump business and the fact that a lot of people got duped into thinking that Trump is a savior. There were even a proposition that uh, Donald Trump is a new Emperor Constantine based mainly on the idea that he'll bring walls, uh, build walls, believe it or not. Uh, so the Mexico uh, wall towards Mexico would be analogous uh, to uh, walls of Byzantium and so on. And those are some of the bizarre ideas people got in the, into their heads, which is somewhat uh, usual in the times of mass delusions. But those are people who who spent uh, a few years uh, supposedly. Um, demolishing other people's delusions. So we'll talk about this and we'll use uh, Dugin's insights as as a basis and do, just to show uh, among other things uh, how people lie to you via alternative media. Now, um, now please listen to this carefully. I grew up and I'm related to the, you know, the Puritans, folks like that, and, and they... Yeah, yeah, he grew up. ...were Francis Bacon trying to set up a new Atlantis, but they thought it'd be a new Atlantis of freedom, a new renaissance, a good thing. I understand your... Now, let's pause for a minute. Uh, there is one thing that Alex Jones did, and now if anybody thinks that I'm wasting my time uh, investigating what somebody like Alex Jones thinks, uh, you are wrong, because Alex Jones is a very influential performer and media con artist and he is probably much much smarter than me uh, the guy on the right is definitely much smarter than me uh, alexander dugin uh, that is but alex jones too because they are accomplished they goals they know how to do it although dugin sometimes <laughs> loses it uh, now, Alex is here talking about the usual conspiracy theory trope, which I ac accidentally find very, very close, may perhaps very close to historical truth, namely that founding of America uh, had an underlying ideology uh, that was reflecting uh, the ideas of, let's say, for the sake of discussion, Rosenkreuzerans and early, early proto-freemasons about creating new world of the reboot of golden age and it was expressed in francis bacon's uh, the new atlantis or later on maybe in uh, manly p hole masonic philosophers works uh, masonic american authentic american masonic philosophers and very many <coughs> and many many authors argued about this as something of uh, anti-christian anti-human and they were um, cushioned into into beautiful sounding words and what alex jones does here and he he did he was star he started doing it in the wake of this trump campaign when he got on the trump train is to present this new atlantis idea uh, as something that is in fact good originally <laughs> 
and that was corrupted by evil, evil Freemasons, uh, namely those Freemasons like Voltaire and such, and inspired by Voltaire, while you had these American founding fathers who adhere to that idea to make this new Atlantis, and it, it is good. He's telling this because he, somebody told him that Dugin has to say a lot about Atlantis, Atlantic and so on. So we'll hear uh, in the further what does this mean. Come on. Earlier writing saying it's the land-based old... ...human Russia versus this new liberalism of the Atlanteans. I apologize for this. This is a bit of an old laptop. But all I'm saying is, for me in research, it's actually the people that want to set up new freedoms that are the classic liberals versus the new cancerous Jacobin false 1776. French Revolution is the counterfeit of the new Atlantis versus George Washington. And <laughs> Look at him, huh? Dugin notes, but I know what's going on through his head. He's trying to figure out the best way to dupe Jones, who is talking total rubbish, <laughs> and not to not to come out as too pretentious. <laughs> That's it. The in his eyes, he countered the Jacobins, and his writings sound like your writings. So, so maybe the media took you out of context, or, or maybe you're right and I'm wrong. But just knowing, you know, that I was basically brought up, it wasn't like a cult or anything. but like we're building the new great world to empower the whole planet that's a America's secret destiny you know because I had a lot of family that helped found Texas and other places it wasn't like it was just known this is what we do and we don't want war we want to fight evil we want to you know free the oppressed so, so talk about your theory of the Atlantean <laughs> civilization versus the Russian land-based civilization. Because, hell, Russia, as you know, was pretty much founded by water-based Vikings. <laughs> this got to hurt. <laughs> water-based Vikings. ...to a great extent. So I guess, I mean, wouldn't you argue at the end that... Uh, we'll ...Russia itself this. is an Atlantean creation? So, uh, first of all... Oh, just one favor. Your, your thing's a little... And I'm loud, too, because I'm excited like you. Just because <laughs> there's a little bit of reverb that got worse, just, just don't talk too loud so we can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, uh, uh, that is not Russian uh, invention, uh, idea of uh, Atlanticism and uh, um, Eurasia. Uh, it is um, a Britain concept of, of uh, uh, Mr. Um, Francis Bacon. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Mackinder, Mackinder, Spigman, an American tradition of uh, geopolitics, and they uh, uh, made uh, they made, made um, uh, identification between Western society as Atlant Atlantis, liberal society, and Eastern society as a society that uh, is based on the collective values. So that is... Okay. Uh... Let's go... Let's call it even for now. Uh, now what... What... what uh, Alex Jones tried to... To point out with his convoluted... <laughs> way is that uh, there is a true true America which is not that Atlantia or at Euro Atlantis block that Dugin talks about and this true America uh, was uh, formed on the ideas of Puritans and such and those 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 fine uh, fine representatives of uh, Christianity of true Christianity and so on it's completely rubbish and Dugin, I, I, I'm sure that Dugin had a hard time to uh, figure out the strategy, what lie uh, to use uh, with this idiot uh, <laughs> when he opens his mouth. 
And now what Dugin says here, uh, what Alex Jones wants to say is that Americans and uh, and Russians can be very good friends because <laughs> the Russians are water-based vi Vikings. <laughs> No, they are not, especially in Dugin's and Eurasianist views, they are a combination of uh, a Mongol horde and s a sedentary sl Slavic, uh, Slavic um, residents of this great space of Eurasia, so they, they got nothing to do with water, believe me, Alex Jones. And when it comes to this principle of Atlantia, it's not river water, it's sea water. Uh, Americans and Russians, and bear this, please, my American listeners, can never be friends, in Dugin's view. Uh, why is that? Uh, because uh, both great spaces, or uh, as he calls it, uh, have their manifest destinies. And those manifest destinies are in fact uh, caused by geography and the relation uh, they as people or you and Russians as people uh, developed towards geography and this is not something that can be changed by an act of free will by liberation Dugin is not interested in, interested in anyone being <laughs> liberated believe me he's interesting in uh, promoting, implementing, in any which way, furthering uh, the plan which is laid out uh, on, uh, in the most uh, uh, exhausting form in his foundations of geopolitics, uh, namely the plan to make a, new, a, Ru a Russian, global Russian world order. Now I'm paraphrasing his own words. And this uh, Russian world order is an Eurasian empire. And it is, uh, mind you, an empire. It can be anything else. And what Dugin wants is a weak America. And what he ultimately votes is Delendare Cartago. Destroy the Carthage. And your American's Carthage, that's you. <laughs> and there is no way, no way, he can change this principle because whole of his ideology, which is to some extent appropriated by Russian government in the sense of, uh, let's say, um, political rhetoric, they use Eurasianist rhetoric, not only Dugin's, because Dugin is not the only Eurasianist in Russia and worldwide, but they use this rhetoric. And when you hear this rhetoric, they, it, it cannot mean, uh, it cannot uh, look upon you as anything but enemies. Namely, uh, the duality of geopolitical principles as seen by Dugin, and as he correctly says, developed by English, British and American uh, power mongers of the 19th, century, 19th and early 20th century, uh, is, uh, is an idea, is, uh, is in fact uh, the ultimate form of Darwinism, because a uh, founder, a real founder of uh, geopolitics is Friedrich Retzel, a uh, German author who was Lo and behold, the student of Ernest Haeckel. And Ernest Haeckel was one of those premier uh, Darwin-pushing uh, scientists to, to the point of making uh, falsify, uh, falsified uh, data in support of the theory of evolution. And uh, geopolitics in, is an idea that uh, the world uh, of human beings is not so much biologically determined as much as determined by the quote-unquote torrents of land and sea. We are the expression of landslides, of waves hitting the shores and such things. And I'm not kidding. This is some kind of, of uh, uh, evolutionism that looks at, uh, at the human society, civilizations and beings as reflections of uh, completely blind uh, geographical impulses and it is in my opinion even worse 
then the biologism of, of Herbert Spencer or such people could take a look at societies as, as analogous to ant uh, or beehives and such. Uh, the guys like Dugin uh, look at the so societies as reflections of a pile of mud and puddle of water. So they are looking at, at, at human societies as analogous to uh, movements of uh, uh, dead dead things. Even I, I would go even so far to say this. And uh, we okay, we won't go too much into this because there will be this upcoming analysis of foundations of geopolitics. I'm promising for my, well, more than a month now. But let us just uh, remember that there is no peace between the Russia and America for this guy. There cannot be because it is uh, the principle, the foundation of geopolitics is uh, dualist. It is the principle of uh, clash of two principles of Atlantean and Telluric uh, or land-based sea power and land power and there is no uh, no uh, uh, no peace between these two powers and USA is a sea power by its uh, by all standards in Dugin's eyes and it must be Delenda Delenda Cartago Est it must be destroyed and he is duping you uh, using this master duper, American master duper. I think after uh, the, the uh, Trump disappointment, uh, we won't see much of him on <laughs> Infowars. So, uh, Dugin, as, as you heard in the introduction, introductory. Uh, slur this byline they, they ran before the interview started taken from somewhere around here Dugin said that Trump can save the world blah 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 Dugin likes to talk about either saving or destroying the world nothing in, in between because he's either or petty bourgeois red bourgeois uh, con artists so so that he loves this uh, this extreme choices nobody can make and he promoted this idea that uh, uh, Trump will quote unquote drain the swamp. Now let's hear <laughs> what he says after Trump uh, launch, launching attack on Syria. I will quote Third World War, the beginning. Question mark. What happened on April 7, 2017 could be the beginning of a third world war. Full stop. As a rule, commas, nobody wants war, but alas, wars happen, and sometimes world wants. Note, <laughs> note the, the brilliant insight. Uh, by the way, I'm mm, I am quoting interpunction because this is what, how he talks at uh, Katehon uh, Katehon uh, website TV because uh, most of Dugin's uh, public in the uh, audience in the West are snowflake uh, alt writers because they are great snowflakes. They find it uh, uh, offensive when somebody talks English with that heavy heavy Russian accent. So that's why probably he he has this uh, propensity to accent every word, and you have a little window on the right of him when he talks, and uh, when he, uh, you have text sliding because Dugin will do everything, everything to accomplish his goal. And I'm given that he get he's got tremendous energy, and he will go to all lengths, lengths, make a fool of himself, never mind anything, just to make an Eurasian Empire a reality. We continue. Therefore, I posit that first and foremost, as in the case of any disaster, it is necessary to remain calm and gather one's thoughts. Full stop. Now he talks about uh, this 
attack, we'll skip that. And we come to the swamp. Uh, namely, Dugin accepted this idea, this, this metaphor of uh, Trump draining the swamp. And he said a few things about that also. And now, <laughs> swamp drain Trump. <laughs> How to rationalize? Let's see. The formal decision to attack was taken by Donald Trump. In doing so, Comas, he stopped being Trump, Comas, and became Hillary, disguised as a man, a kind of transvestite. Full stop. Everything that Trump fought against over the course of the election campaign, and which he promised to change a little line, he put his signature underneath all of this today. Full stop. Therefore, Comas, it was not he who took the decision. Now, let's pause a bit about this syllogism. So, everything Trump fought against over the course of the election, in which he promised to change, he put the signature, oh, I don't understand how he came to, therefore it was not he who took the decision, like hell, how you conclude this from, from, from this, no way. Uh, Dugin, uh, sometimes, uh, Dugin is extremely intelligent, man, uh, and extremely devious, uh, but when he focuses on something, and he tends to, to be, uh, to, to, to be a scribomaniac, and he writes a lot, and then he, he makes these offhand comments uh, just to not to lose the momentum, and then, then he really can, 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 can really act like an idiot. And that's a good thing, because he's a very dangerous man, and if he would not have such weaknesses, he would be even more dangerous. We continue. He simply showed that he is henceforth in no state to decide anything like hell but the whole point of this was uh, i think for trump to show that he can decide on a whim without consulting anybody and without due process i think that's more likely and i don't think that uh, dugin was duped by some youtube oh put it oh trump <laughs> Ah, they are all the same. God damn it! I am starting to mix this, mix these personalities. Uh, I think that it's plausible to to put a, put out hypothesis that it was that this was all along uh, the Trump's policy. He just needed some uh, some good uh, good campaign uh, narrative, and now uh, narrative is used up. Now he'll he'll sit on Americans' backs another four or eight years, and that's it. No neocons made him do it. No YouTube video made him do it. He was it, this was maybe politics for all along. He's uh, uh, here to to replace uh, the CC president Obama, who could not, who was uh, around whom the the Russians ran circles in diplomacy, and now he he will uh, Trump will 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 show a kind of like heavy-handed approach. That is pl quite plausible, I would say. But people who got duped uh, with Trump uh, cannot accept this because they have to accept that they were duped. And that's their problem. We continue. Under the pressure of media and the swamp's politicians, Cuomas, he surrendered his small and devoted followers. Cuomas, those who represented not CFR, that is, Council for Foreign Relations, Comas, not the neocons and not the deep state, but Comas uh, on the ceiling, good old America. This Comas, uh, this Comas up there on the ceiling, good old America, which elected Donald Trump as its president, has once again been left out in the cold. Comas, without Trump. Full stop. What Trump did by allowing himself to be convicted of Assad's brackets. In other words, Russia's involvement in the chemical attack means capitulation. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Dugin here assumes that attack on Assad or attack by Assad is attack on Russia or attack by Russia. 
this is the essential point uh, most people are prone, probably prone to miss. Uh, he considers Syria part of the southern rim of the Eurasian Empire uh, that would be based in Tehran, in, in Iran. Iran would be, a, a, let's say, a pivot or the backbone of this southern uh southeastern uh, southern i'm sorry southern southern uh, wing of eurasian empire that's why he says uh, he don't consider Assad an ally he consider him a client uh and uh, attack on him is attack on russia this is not uh, believe me i i can't 100% prove it from this text i can prove it from dugins through uh, books uh, where he goes into detail but uh, entertain uh, this notion please that he's not looking on Assad as an ally uh, but as a subject of Eurasian Empire so attack on Assad must be attack on civilization empire Assad represents it that's Eurasian Empire which is not in existence and probably will never be or well, not, not probably, surely will never be, uh, as well as the Euro-Atlantic Empire, which is falling apart, which is a pipe dream. But in the process of it falling apart, how many people die? Okay, we continue. Tellingly enough, Kuomas just yesterday, he easily let go of Stephen Bannon. Perhaps the only real conservative without the prefix neo little line in his circle. Full stop. He wanted to drain the swamp. Full stop. This is commendable, commas. But this is risky business. Full stop. The swamp drained Trump. Full stop. What is happening now in Syria is strictly what the globalist, commas, the swamp have been striving for. Full stop. The Trump factor was vanished before our very eyes. Full stop. He vacillated a little, vacillated a little, commas. And now he is a pawn in the game of more serious forces. Full stop. He showed that he is no longer Trump. Full stop. Maybe Trump will try to become Trump again. Commas. But this is unlikely. Oh, my God. Of course, the, those are uh, standard raci rationalizations of Trumpophrenics, uh, which uh, Dugin uses to 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 find a common ground with his Anglo-Saxon uh, English readers, Amer mostly American Stephen By. If Steve Bannon was there, if he was left uh, by the Trump side, this would not happen. Those are now things they will they will make up just to. To rationalize uh, their delusions, uh, it can be true, but it, but it probably is not true. And now this idea of the swamp. This this is idea that whole world is permeated by the globalists. Uh, that is to say, George Soros, the uh, and the likes, or that is the George Soros. Uh, the alt media has an image of, and that they are all the same in all out the world. And uh, the fight in this world is a money hand battle between nationalist and globalist. Like hell it is. This is the uh, the Trump. This was the Trump's selling point. Trump campaign's selling point and appropriation of alt media uh, along these lines because nationalists. <laughs> Well, they are, let's just say they are just a different kind of globalist. And believe me, and I will prove it to you on Kali Tribune in due time, that Dugin is globalist too, but other kind of globalist. Uh, most of you uh, unacquainted with this Ruski Mir of his, I don't know, don't understand, don't have a frame ref of reference to understand, but he is globalist in the reverse. He is the globalist of Eurasian Empire, which has to be an Idiocracy, not idiocracy, but ideo ideocracy, the rule of ideas. And in one place in Ge Foundations of Geopolitics, he says that premonition of this empire were two. The first was global revolution, he means Trotsky. The other was global Reich, that is Nazi Germany. I will talk about it uh, in due time. So the Trump is not the Trump. Okay. 
So, he said, first of all, there is a good old America, Kumas, Israelis, and conservative, which thought that it had elected its representative. Full stop. <clears throat> there is no good old America for Dugin. There is only Cartaga that is to be destroyed. And one thing you have to know about Dugin, he cannot think in the nuances. He thinks always in either or, which is typical for this modern shit for brains philosophers uh, or the likes of Heidegger and such, which are very intelligent people. I mean, Heidegger, I, you can compare little old me with Heidegger, but I'm not a shithead. He, he was. Uh, they can think only in either or terms. And when he says good old America, no, 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 no. Carthaginians, Carthaginians are to be delendare, destroyed, no Cartaga. Never trust him when he says this. Isolationist and conservative. And this is what he wants because this, this makes America, uh, <clears throat> Uh, kind of retract its 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 influence from the world, and this only goes to show how bad this political analyst is, because <clears throat> he actually bought <laughs> into idea that Trump will make America a, a bit isola isolationist, and that it will <laughs> it will <laughs> cease to be empire like hell. It would. <laughs> and good old America and simple American people would, well, uh, would have a really hard time of accepting uh, the rising prices of oil and gasoline and such because that would be a consequence of America beginning as what Dugin calls a regional nation, for instance, the nation that is not uh, pretending for world power and which he considers that Russia, Russia must never become. <clears throat> So he's a comb this combination of of lying and 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 not getting anything right. <clears throat> and now this. Moreover, Guamas, good old America has a foreign policy platform, which is realism. I e America first, Guamas. Which means that if the U.S. is not directly affected, Guamas, then the U.S. should not get involved. Full stop. <laughs> realism. Don't buy into this guy. For him, the only realism is Zbigniew Brzezinski's realism, who, Zbigniew, whom he calls very sincere man, because uh, they, they met and he told him how uh, they fooled the Russians in the Afghanistan, because he is the Brzezinski's equivalent in Russia, although not so cool, calm and collected, because Brzezinski comes from the family of diplomats. And Dugin is a guy who... who, who built his uh, reputation uh, from street fighting and such things. I mean, he, he really climbed the, the social ladder in very chaotic circumstances. But realism for those guys, the players of great game, is to accept that there is a sea power and land power and one has to be eradicated. And for Dugin, that's America. And there is no America first is not realism because empires had to expand. Because sea power uh, has a different uh, geo, uh, geopolitical uh, boundary than the land power. Sea power has the belt, while the land power has a line, a limits. So uh, sea powers tend to have this proxy, uh, or let's call them colonies, uh, proxy areas, proxy spaces in which they rule, not by directly occupying them, by by as America does by ideology or by, by commerce, uh, mostly, uh, while uh, land powers uh, has the, have this tendency of crossing, uh, of occupying uh, militarily uh, the other spaces, and they see their, uh, their boundaries and frontier, frontiers as, some, as something, as something uh, concrete uh, and, and simple, like a line. So this, this got uh, America first. In Dugin's eyes, has nothing to do with realism. He's lying. 
focusing on domestic issues. Dugin said that a concept of regional state, that is, the state that has uh, influence in some region, for instance, most American and, and English and what not alt media consumers think that Russia is precisely this that is that Russia has a due influence in its neighborhood so it can do whatever it wants with uh, Ukraine and so on because they don't define what the influence means because they are pampered westerners who don't know what it means when your very existence is threatened a very existence of the people when they tell you that you don't exist that's a very 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 ominous feeling but never mind that. Uh, this is something that Dugin claims that Russia must not accept under any circumstances being a regional force, a regional power, a regional state is something that must not be the phase in the development of Eurasian Empire. It must not be at all. And what I find very interesting is that he doesn't so much uh, hold it against uh, Putin that Russia projects this image. And this uh, <clears throat> drives me to conclude that he probably sees Putin as somebody who is, who is on the way of laying grounds for this Eurasian Empire and that uh, Russian's regional focus is a Russ. I don't know. I don't have so, such high opinion <laughs> of Dugin's predictions. And reading the uh, reading the political reality, so I don't know. But uh, one thing uh, you can say about Dugin, and I always repeat, he can, you can call him crazy, you can call him even ugly with the beard and, and and evil and what you want, but don't call him stupid because he's not stupid. Although he can sometimes he can do some incredibly stupid things, but that's because probably because he is not your cookie cutter academic. He is from the streets. And that's something I can relate to. I understand why this happens. There is no... Um, <clears throat> uh, he has no instinctive uh, scholarly beha system of behavior in the back of his mind. So uh, sometimes he, he just uh, jumps out of the bounds. And he loves doing it. But we'll continue. Now, he can, the CFR's method of action is soft power, strangulation. Uh, he's point out CFR because he knows that uh, dupes in the West are trying to to discover a uh, one point of of influence that is making turning this world into hell, and they choose CFR and they choose, for instance, Soros and such. All of the things are far, far, far more multi-layered than this, of course. So he is playing on these sentiments. But as I said, America is a total enemy. There can be no peace with U.S. And, and no! It can be only clean state of Eurasia one day. Sea power must be destroyed. And mind you, uh, Dugin has an apocalyptic geopolitics. And geopolitics is essentially apocalyptic, the world, a secular apocalyptic worldview by its very nature, uh, where there will be this end camp. I think uh, Jean Thiriard first used this word, or was it was it was it Carl Schmidt? I'm not sure. Never mind, Dugin uses it for the, 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 the uh, last war between those great powers that will end, of course, in the victory of the land power and the uh, thousand years, Reich, excuse me, millennium years, uh, Eurasia, and so on and so forth. This is what Dugin wants. It's a, it's a, it's a, frankly a American manifest destiny in reverse. Uh, if you if you remember uh, Huntington's claim, West and the rest. Well, Dugin is rest. That's that's cl uh, clash of civilization looked from uh, non-Western um, point of view, but with the same premises. So he is working on clash of civilizations only on the side of other civilization than America and Britain. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> now Dugin asks who made Trump do it and says Unlike Trump, Comas, who I think is not aware of the existence of geopolitics, the neocons are Atlanticists. For them, as for their direct predecessors, the Trotskites, the main enemy is the civilization of land, i.e. us. For the deep state, this has also been customary since the Cold War era and Mokartism. And even some of the CFR hoax like Zbigniew Brzezinski share this dualistic vision of C versus land. Full stop. <laughs> now he supposes we are sup uh, he sup presupposes that any nobody reading this ever read him. Now he's 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 uh, uh, practically in the implication um, condemning them for <laughs> taking this as a principle whereas he takes this as a principle also they are the same bunch of what they call themselves realist i think i would call them messianic lunatics in high po extremely high position of power Let's continue. CFR, as a rule, tries to reassure Moscow in saying that there is no such thing as geopolitics and that the war of continents, quote unquote, ah, I figured out how you call this thingy, is nonsense, commas. But they themselves are guided by geopolitics and are waging against us this very war of continents. This is true. This is true, and uh, something that Dugin critics, like for instance Andreas Umland, uh, his critics on the behalf of this liberal establishment fail, is to affirm that this is true. And they don't do it because they would undermine their positions because they are working for the Western scumbags, while he is, whereas he is working for the Eastern scumbags. Well, as I am working for more or less nobody I can say that they are both uh, sides of the same coin but you have to take into consideration both sides because if you're not you will lose you will get duped and this is what happened by these right-leaning people who, who, who believe that Trump will be I don't know what a savior a constant thing Says Dugin, of course, it is better when an enemy does not know that war is being waged against him. Line, little line, again. Let him believe that he is peacefully sunbathing on the beach. Then it will be a surprise when a nuclear submarine emerges by his sun chair. Bingo! Exclamation mark. <laughs> Quite an image. <laughs> Submarine. <laughs> okay, okay, Alexander Gelyevich. Okay, Sasha, I understand you. Are nervous, I see. You are nervous. You are, you are pissed off. You are losing it a bit. That's understandable. And so what, what he wants uh, to... to, to <sighs> To do here is to uh, prove that that we are all in the same boat uh, Americans Russians Croats Serbs and so on and we are fighting San Omni's present enemy like hell this is not what he thinks there is a one world for him and this is the Ruski Mir a Russian world and he wants all world to be what he sees as Russian world and all of this is his worse how to get under the skin of Westerners because this is essential for undermining uh, the Western societies. And he, <laughs> he and other idiots, uh, I mean idiots, I mean people with with uh, with uh, uh, bad intentions, 
uh, especially in alt media, uh, overplayed the, their hand because they believed that Trump uh, signifies the weakening of American militarism. And I think, frankly, that this was uh, absolutely idiotic presupposition because he's editing but. And they expected the weakening of America, now they don't have, I mean, America is losing, as, as he said, where they quoted Pat Buchanan, losing its soul for winning the world. This is a fact, and, and uh, what I consider, uh, I happen to like Americans quite a lot, although I don't share their civilizational values in, in one bit, uh, maybe in, in the terms of uh, conducting business and such, where they are really... Excellent. Uh, I think that that a lot of Americans suffer, and some of them went to to practically idolizing the Russians, and this is quite painful for me to see because that they don't know what they're doing. Not that I have a lot of qualms about Russians. I have some, but not that I think that Russians are in themselves predetermined in what they do. That's something Dugin would say. Because I don't believe in this in this uh, final determination by geography, <laughs> and this is nothing but 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 tactical using media as a subversion. And Dugin is doing this, and most people in alt media thought that mainstream media are some kind of boogeyman, which is now defeated. But they are boogeymen also, boogie people all around, and. Um, this only goes to show how these political analysts, be that on CNN or be that on, on Ford Political dot Soviet Union website, uh, mostly don't have an idea what's going on. You know, it's it's very hard to figure out where things are going, and now we have this mania about geopolitics. Uh, brought about mostly by alt media being influenced by russians because this geopolitics as everything when you when you have this term geopolitics uh, coming out of woodwork that's something that began in russia and i think that dugin initiated with it in 1997 with uh, with his book foundations of geopolitics which got plagiarized in in many ways and this kind of thinking with geopolitics at the forefront uh, became a vogue in Russia. Now it's vogue in <laughs> Western alt media because Western alt media are heavily influenced by Russian mainstream media. <laughs> so that's it. Okay, this was hope you hope you found this enlightening and enjoyed it. I apologize for slow video at sometimes, but. Uh, this is this is somewhat uh, somewhat bad equipment on my part, uh, but as Kali Tribune is uh, gathering readers and gathering support, to which I'm very thankful. In the future, in the future few months, you'll see. I promise you'll see a significant improve, improvement in this. Thank you for your attention.